Our President Trump has sent Congress his $4.4 trillion budget proposal. The blueprint for fiscal 2019 budget includes funding for the wall on the U.S.-Mexico border, rebuilding America's infrastructure, combating the opioid crisis, and fighting high drug prices. President Trump and White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders weighed in on the budget outline yesterday. In the budget, uh, we took care of the military like it's never been taken care of before. In fact, General Mattis called me, he goes, wow, I can't believe I got everything we wanted. I said, that's right, but we want no excuses. We want, we want you to buy twice, okay, twice what you thought for half the price. The budget reduces the deficit by over $3 trillion. This budget not only funds the, funds the president's priorities, but puts the country on a path to restoring fiscal discipline. But some House Freedom Caucus members are speaking out against the plan, citing concerns over rising deficits. Joining us right now is White House Director of Legislative Affairs, Mark Short. Mark, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Maria, thanks for having me on. Are you expecting Congress to approve this budget? Well, Maria, keep in mind the budget is what initially sets forward the appropriations process. Uh, last year, there was budget reconciliation votes to pass tax relief. This year, because we already have a budget caps deal in place, this is more of a direction to Congress as to where the administration wants to go more than it is a legislative vehicle. What, what about the fiscal responsibilities here that we've spoken about so many times and, and, and really getting uh, the uh, budget back on a path to fiscal responsibility, as Sarah Huckabee Sanders just said? How does it do that? Because by all amounts, when you look at this budget, you're talking about trillion-dollar deficits and a lot of commentary around it that basically says we're in debt for as long as the, you can see, and it's only going to get more expensive as interest rates go higher. Well, Maria, a couple things. Uh, one, last year we put forward a budget that did balance in the 10-year window, and Congress summarily threw that in the trash and said the cuts were too steep and too harsh. This year the budget does cut $3 trillion below the baseline over the course of 10 years. We're very sincere about wanting the cuts. We're very sincere about duplicative government programs. We're sincere about wanting to cut a lot of foreign aid that goes to people who are actually fighting against the America's best interests. At the same time, we have a priority to rebuild our military. It's something the, prom the president promised on the campaign trail that he would keep America safe. And our military has been uh, with multiple wars over the last two decades. Uh, unfortunately, we have a lot of equipment that has been uh, has been deteriorating that needs to be replenished, and we have troops that need to get paid. So there are re real national security threats that we need to make sure that we're funding. But we're sincere about wanting to cut these deficits. But the question is, will Congress actually partner with us to do so? Well, I mean, even Mick Mulvaney said yesterday that the budget does not balance within 10 years. Um, and, and so we know that. And there's also some groups like the Committee for the Responsible Budget, Maya McGinnis's group, who basically says the, the projections are way too rosy. You can't expect 3% economic growth for 10 years. Maybe we'll get 3 or 4% growth for the next couple of years. But, I mean, what if we get a recession? I mean, d does that change anything here if we get a recession and you're not seeing the growth numbers that, that you are putting on paper? Well, I, I, I do appreciate that concern. I do think that, we're, in fact, we're conservative in projecting 2.9 percent growth. The last three quarters, we've averaged 3 percent. We think that uh, where the economy is going is to, strength, is to a much stronger position. But keep in mind that during the Obama year, some of those same critics, Obama's budget predicted 4 percent growth, yet they averaged 1.8 percent growth. So we think we're actually being realistic and conservative in the estimates we're putting forward. So when do you think that it, it, reining in the, uh, the, the entitlements, which we know is really where the, where the growth in spending is, when does that become a priority, Mark? I, Maria, it's a great question. We, we do need to get sincere about entitlement. Entitlement growth and spending is, is, uh, is, is a driver of many of the deficits. Um, but we also believe that there's a lot of things we can do on the discretionary front right now. And, uh, and that's where the president is focused at the moment. Discretionary meaning cutbacks? Yeah, absolutely. Meaning, as I said, the $3 trillion that Mick has proposed, that OMB directors proposed over the next 10 years are, are primarily on the discretionary side. And uh, as I say, in many cases, these are foreign aids to, foreign aid to countries that are actually aiding uh, terrorist organizations, aiding opponents of the United States. So, yeah, there's a lot of places where there's waste. There's a lot of places where there are dollars going that there shouldn't be. And the president has, has directed Mulvaney to say, hey, look, let's cut that out. The question is, will Congress partner with us on that? And you're saying the last, last year when you did this, Congress didn't they threw it in the trash so what, what they, they did yeah i mean even even some of the, the so-called fiscal hawks who are uh, berating the uh, the 
the deficits in the future were the same ones saying that the, the, the president's budget last year is going to go in the trash because the cuts to foreign aid and other programs were too strong. So, so it, it, there's a, the country needs to have a real question and a real conversation about the, the debt and the deficits. At the same time, Maria, we do think that the economy is strong. We think that uh, the 3% GDP growth of the last three quarters is strong. We recognize that 4.2 million Americans have received either a, a wage increase or a bonus in the last six weeks since the tax relief package was passed. And so we think that it's on strong footing at the moment. So where does the $200 billion for the infrastructure plan come from, Mark? I mean, the White House budget proposal includes that $200 billion uh, for rebuilding the infrastructure. Yeah, President Trump said this about fixing America's roads and bridges yesterday. Listen to this. I submitted legislative principles to Congress that will spur the biggest and boldest infrastructure investment in American history. The framework will generate an unprecedented $1.5 to $1.7 trillion investment in American infrastructure. We're going to have a lot of public-private, and that way it gets done on time, on budget. So where does that money come from? So keep in mind, the president is well campaigned on the reality that the America's infrastructure is crumbling. The proposal he's put forward, I think, is a responsible one of saying there's $200 billion available that we're going to send to state and local governments and municipalities to say, we will partner with you, but we're expecting you to raise additional funds. We believe that this will entice private public partnerships to come forward to help match federal dollars. It's not just the federal government saying, here's the dollars. It's saying, we'll match a percentage of an overall project that we believe will help spur additional growth. Growth. We're also asking that uh, the permitting process be reformed. As the president's talked about the Empire State Building being constructed in one year, yet today uh, average roads take up to 10 years to get through the permitting process. So that is a large part of the package, as well as reforming the bureaucracy and reducing the regulations here in Washington. Meanwhile, the Senate is kicking off a debate on immigration. The president weighed in on reaching a DACA deal with Congress yesterday. I want to get your take on this. Here's what he said. Yeah. I did not want DACA in the budget. I wanted DACA separate so that we could talk about it and make a deal. And I hope to be able to make a deal. I hope the Democrats are not going to use it just as a campaign. So, Mark, as the liaison between the White House and Capitol Hill, what kind of deal would the president sign? What do you need to get in order to get a DACA deal? Well, Marie, I think that uh, we've been very specific and very clear about our priorities on this front. Uh, the president laid out a very specific framework that said that he's willing to go an extra step with those 690,000 participants in the DACA program to say, I'll expand that population where Democrats want. I'll even provide a pathway to citizenship. But I want to make sure we're not back here in another couple of years dealing with the same problem. So therefore, I want border security. We want to end chain migration. And we want to end the visa lottery program. That's the proposal the president's put forward. We look forward to getting a vote in the Senate, uh, hopefully this week. Is, is it going to get? I mean, do you think that the Democrats are going to agree to that? Maria, I think the question for them is, do they want uh, to agree to a plan that, again, provides a final solution to this population, or they just want to politicize it? Do they want to make sure and there's, a, there's a sentiment that, for many of them, they don't actually want a solution. They want to keep the political issue alive. And so let's just kick the can down the road another couple of years and codify DACA for a couple of years, and then we can have the same political debate. Uh, the president's looking to try to solve the problem once and for all and provide certainty for this population. All right. We will be watching that. Mark, good to see you. Thanks so much. Thanks, Maria. Thanks for having me on. Mark Short joining us there from the White House.